Hello and welcome to another video from the events calendar. My name is James and today I'm going to be walking you through how to use WooCommerce and Event Tickets Plus to sell tickets from your WordPress website. Let's get started. Okay, so for this tutorial, you will need Event Tickets, Event Tickets Plus, and WooCommerce. Now, Event Tickets and WooCommerce are both free and they can be installed right through your WordPress dashboard, which I'll show you in a second. Um, event Tickets Plus, however, you'll need to go to the eventscalendar.com. You can go to Products, Tickets, and RSVP, and then you can purchase Plus. And after you purchase it, you'll be given the opportunity to download the zip file, which you can then install on your WordPress website. So to do all that, you can simply go over here to Plugins, Add New. And for Event Tickets and WooCommerce, you can simply search for the plugin over here and hit install. And then once it's finished installing, hit activate. For Event Tickets Plus, simply come up here to upload plugin and click on choose file, find the zip file and click install. And again, once that's finished, you'll have to click the blue activate button. Once all of your three plugins are activated, you will be able to go ahead and get started. Now, when you install Event Tickets, it'll bring up a uh, kind of a welcome page, which we can skip for now. Um, and then when you install WooCommerce, there's going to be a whole uh, setup process wizard that it will automatically launch into. And it's pretty simple to get that uh, to get through that. And I'm going to show you that uh, step by step here in this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and get all those three plugins installed and then I'll be right back. OK, so I have installed and activated Event Tickets and Event Tickets Plus and WooCommerce just finished installing. So I'm going to go ahead and click Activate and we're going to get started with the WooCommerce setup. OK, so like I said, it does automatically launch into a setup wizard. And so I'm just going to go ahead and build some of this information out here. <clears throat> I'm going to make up some information here. Obviously, you'll want to put in you know, the real information. <laughs> um, And that's a good enough email that doesn't really exist. And I'm going to choose not to sign up for their newsletter. Um, and I'm not going to sign up to build a better WooCommerce. Um, so which industry do you operate in? I'm just going to choose food and drink for this tutorial. And then it's going to ask what kind of products will be listed. Now, you'll notice that you know tickets is not an option. That's fine. It really doesn't matter what you choose here. Um, I'm just going to leave physical products and uh, hit continue. Now this screen, um, or I guess the next screen is the important one here. Um, yeah, this you want to make sure to click this. And then I'm just going to uncheck basically all of these, except for I do recommend this first one. This first one is WooCommerce's sort of default um, payment system that connects to Stripe. And so you with WooCommerce, you have a lot of different options, you don't have to use Stripe. You can use PayPal, you know, um, Square. There's all there's a whole bunch of, of payment gateways, but I personally recommend Stripe. It's just the easiest to get set up, and um, this is this is their default way of of setting up Stripe. If that's the payment gateway that you want to use, um, I'm going to leave all these other ones unchecked and hit continue. And this will give you an opportunity to install a theme. You've probably already done that, so I'm just going to click continue with my active theme right here. And that's it for the initial setup of WooCommerce. Now we do need to connect a payment gateway. Um, like I said, you can. There's a bunch of different options. If you come over here to Settings and click on this Payments tab up here, um, WooCommerce Payments is the thing that we just told it that we wanted to add. Um, and then if you want something else other than that, now this it doesn't say it really explicitly here, but this, like I said earlier, this uses Stripe. If you want something besides Stripe, you can come down here where it says Discover Other Payment Options. And you will see that there are, um, this is actually kind of their older method of integrating with Stripe. So you probably don't want to use this. If you're going to use Stripe, you probably just want to use the WooCommerce payments. Um, but this is here. Um, they, WooCommerce does have an article that explains the difference between these two methods. And for the most part, WooCommerce payments is better. Um, but there, there's a specific case where you may want to use um, kind of their old school method of connecting to Stripe. And I think it has to do with 
you know, if, if you live in a particular country or something. But um, for the purposes of this tutorial, like I said, I would just stick with WooCommerce payments unless you want to use, you know, PayPal or Square, um, Amazon Pay. Braintree is kind of a popular one. I think they're owned by PayPal. Um, so you can see there's there's quite a few different options here. Um, so I'm going to just go back to this screen because I already have WooCommerce payments and uh, I'm going to hit finish setup. Now, I can't actually complete this because I'm using a local instance. This, this website isn't live and um, it gets mad at me, as you can see right here. Um, it, won't, it won't let me set it up, but the process is actually very easy. Um, you'll click on here and it'll basically just have you log in to your Stripe account. So obviously if you don't have a Stripe account, you'll need to go set that up. It's free to have an account and then they do charge you. Um, you know, I think it's like, don't quote me on this, look at their website, but it, I think it's like three and a half percent, you know, of your, of your um, transactions. And then plus like, there's like a five cents per transaction or something like that. Um, again, don't quote me because they changed their prices. In fact, I think I just got an email the other day that said they're changing some of the prices. So, um, but the account itself is free. You don't have to pay a monthly fee to have a Stripe account. It's just a per transaction charge that they that they charge. Um, so if you click this button and then go through that setup, it'll, it really only takes you like a minute. Just sign in with your Stripe account and then you'll be good to go. And then uh, you'll be able to start creating tickets. Um, what I'm going to do is for the purposes of this tutorial so that I can create tickets is I'm going to go back here to payments settings, or I'm sorry, WooCommerce settings and click on payments again. And then I'm just going to choose to enable cash on delivery and hit save. This will allow me to create tickets. If you don't have some kind of payment system set up, um, then it won't let you create a ticket. It won't let you charge for a ticket. So now that I've done that, uh, this is where some people get tripped up. Um, some people think that when they're using WooCommerce with Event Tickets Plus, that they're going to go to WooCommerce products and add, add tickets there. That is not the case. Now that we've finished setting up WooCommerce and we've set up our, our payment, um, we're basically done with WooCommerce at this point. We are going to do our ticket creation um, inside a post or a page or an event. Um, so I don't have uh, I don't have the events calendar installed, so I won't be creating an event, but I will go ahead and create a page. And I'm just going to call this registration. And for the block, if you're creating an event with events calendar, there'll already be like a ticket block there. But if you're trying to add a ticket to a post or a page or a custom post type, you will just have to click this little plus sign here, search for ticket. And then we can add tickets. And I'm just going to say, I don't know, register. Let's say it costs $10. We have an unlimited capacity. And I'll hit create ticket. And I'll publish this page. And we'll go take a look. And we have this ticket. So um, that's basically it. Now folks can click this, get a ticket. If I had set up Stripe, then when I click proceed to checkout, I would be presented with um, a, a place to put in my credit card information. But since I just have cash on delivery, what this basically means is I'm expecting them to pay in cash when they show up to the event or you know, if you have a credit card reader or whatever. Um, so this is basically saying they'll pay when they get to the event. But if you set up Stripe, then they'll be able to pay right here with the with their credit card information. Or if you set up PayPal, they'll be able to pay that way. Um, if you're curious, it does create a product. Whenever you create a ticket, it will create a product, but you don't really need to concern yourself with this. This is just sort of stuff that happens in the back end that you don't need to really worry about. Um, you can check out your WooCommerce orders. I don't have any orders yet, um, but you can see some of that information there once people start buying tickets. Um, so that's probably about the one time that you would want to hop into a WooCommerce page is to, if you want to look at order information, uh, maybe you need to process a refund. Um, and then there are also some WooCommerce extensions that you might be interested in. Perhaps you want to charge taxes or something like that. Uh, WooCommerce has, has many solutions for, for doing that. So there may be some times where you will hop into a WooCommerce page from time to time, but for the most part, um, you're going to be doing everything, you know, in the event or the post or the page. So 
I hope you guys found this video useful and um, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.